up. Let's draw the last type of conformational isomer now. And to get to this last type of conformational isomer, the eclipsed conformation, all you have to do is take the gauche isomer and rotate the back carbon 60 more degrees so that these chlorines will be rotated directly on top of each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this now. Okay, so go ahead and draw an arrow here. And right above that arrow that we're going to rotate the back carbon 60 degrees this time so that this chlorine on the back carbon will rotate directly back of this chlorine on the front carbon so that this chlorine on the front will be eclipsing this chlorine in the back. And now you can see why this next Newman projection is going to be called an eclipsed conformational isomer because atoms and bonds on the front carbon will eclipse atoms and bonds on the back carbon. Okay, and you can go ahead and start off again by drawing our circle with the dot in the center. Okay, so for this Newman projection, again, we are not touching the front carbon. It's going to be identical to these two still. So we should still see a chlorine on the bond that's pointing up along with two hydrogens, one here and one there. So this front carbon is identical to the previous two Newman projections that we've drawn. We did not rotate, we did not do anything to the front carbon, okay? Only the back carbon. All right, so now, since we've rotated this back carbon 60 more degrees, then the chlorine that used to be here is going to now rotate directly in back of this chlorine in front, okay? And the same thing is gonna to happen to this hydrogen and this hydrogen. This hydrogen is gonna rotate 60 degrees to right here directly in back of this front hydrogen. This hydrogen is going to rotate directly in back of this hydrogen, okay? But let me tell you a little trick when drawing atoms and bonds that overlap because we can't very well just draw the chlorines directly on top of each other, right? Because they'd overlap and we couldn't see the back one very clearly. So what we're going to do is we draw the bonds adjacent to one another like this. So here's the bond extending from the back carbon with the chlorine on there, and we've drawn these bonds adjacent to one another. And the next thing you want to do is make a little degree mark here and write that these bonds and atoms are zero degrees apart from each other, okay? They are directly overlapping each other. They're directly on top of each other. And go ahead and do that for the rest of these bonds. Okay, so we saw that this chlorine rotated in back of this chlorine, and now they're zero degrees apart. This hydrogen is going to rotate 60 degrees to be in back of this hydrogen. Make your little degree sign, and write that there's zero degrees between those. And hey, now this hydrogen is going to rotate 60 degrees behind this hydrogen. Let's fill that one in with our degree sign and say that these are zero degrees apart also, indicating that they're directly aligned on top of one another. And cool, you guys, you've just drawn out the third and final conformational isomer. So let's label this guy eclipsed because the bonds and the atoms on the front carbon are overlapping, they're eclipsing the bonds and atoms on the back carbon, okay? So now you know how to draw the three main types of conformations, anti-staggered, gauche staggered, and finally, eclipsed, okay? So the last thing to mention about conformational isomers is just which conformations are higher or lower in energy. And let me just tell you, that anti-staggered is the lowest in energy, meaning that it's the most stable. Gauche staggered is the next, and eclipsed is the highest in energy, and therefore the least stable. But why is this the case, you guys? Why is anti-staggered the lowest in energy, and eclipsed is the highest in energy? Well, check it out, you guys. It's because of the torsional and steric strain I told you about earlier. So let's talk about that right now. 
And let's go ahead and start with steric strain first, okay? All right, so every atom has a size, right? It has a mass, and some atoms are bigger than others. For example, these chlorines are like this big compared to these hydrogens, which are like this big. And when these big substituents, these chlorines, are as far away from each other as possible, then cool, they don't bump into each other. They don't invade each other's space, right? But check out what happens as these substituents rotate closer to one another. And so we can kind of see in gauche conformation that these chlorines are starting to crowd one another. They're starting to bump into one another. And man, by the time you get to the eclipsed conformation, these atoms are right in each other's faces. They are bumping directly into one another. And this is what's known as steric strain, atoms bumping into one another. And this is really unstable because, hey, you guys, these atoms have electrons on them, right? Let me draw these in. So these chlorines, they each have electrons in them, lone pairs. So when electrons in one atom come in contact with electrons on another atom, they repel. If they're forced to stay next to each other, that is really unstable and very high in energy. It's just like if you have a roommate, if you're forced to share a really small room with someone, dude, you guys are gonna clash. You're gonna get in each other's faces because being in that close of proximity, someone's bound to get irritated. And that's a really unstable relationship because dude, everyone wants their own space, right? It's the same with atoms when they're put really close to one another. Like in the eclipsed conformation, they get irritated and really unstable. They're repelling each other like crazy, causing it to be really high in energy, okay? And that's steric strain. It comes from atoms repelling each other, okay? So go ahead and write next to steric strain that this comes from atoms repelling each other. So in steric strain, this is atoms bumping into each other with their electrons and repelling. However, the other kind of strain, torsional strain, doesn't deal with atoms repelling, it deals with bonds repelling. So let's write next to torsional strain that this deals with bonds repelling. So what does this mean, you guys? Well, check this out. What are all these lines that we've drawn up here in each one of these conformations? These lines represent bonds, right? And what are bonds made out of? Electrons, right? And electrons repel other electrons. So when you rotate these bonds, when you twist these bonds closer to one another, dude, you better believe that those bonds are going to be repelling each other. And if they're kept next to each other, like how we see in the eclipse conformation, dude, that's really unstable and high in energy because bonds, electrons, want to be as far away from each other as possible in staggered conformations. So when you overlap them in a conformation like eclipse, they're like, oh my God, I want to get away from you. I want to repel you, right? And that's why we call it torsional strain. Torsion has to do with twisting, with rotating. And when you rotate bonds towards each other, they repel. And when you repel, that's really unstable. So go ahead and draw an arrow going this way from anti-staggered to ghost staggered to eclipsed. Because as you go from anti to gauche to eclipsed, you are increasing in energy and decreasing your stability. So let me go ahead and erase this right here to make room for it. You still know this is gauche staggered. But let's go ahead and write as you go from anti to gauche to eclipsed that you are increasing in energy and decreasing in stability. So as you go this way, you are maximizing torsional and steric strain. As you go the opposite way, you are minimizing torsional and steric strain. And this is why anti is the most stable and eclipsed is the least stable. And hey, if you want to use models to see how this is happening, let's check it out. 